What do you mean they're on another plane? Well, sometimes when there's an overflow, we send the bags ahead on another flight. Great. So if they end up in Fiji or something, what am I supposed to do then? I have to go to a wedding. A wedding? That's great. Who's getting married? Our brother. Look, when I pay for a ticket, I assume that my bag... I suppose my sister had every right to be nervous. She had heard of luggage ending up in Fiji instead of Sydney and wanted to make sure that it didn't happen to us. It was hardly noticeable. But behind our check-in attendant's confident smile, something was wrong. It was something in the turn of her mouth, the urgency of her fingers on the keyboard that suggested that things might not be as straightforward as she would have us believe. Perhaps in the streaming numbers and tables of flight paths, destination arrival and departure times, she became aware of a certain unknowable element, some possibility that things weren't as they should be. Laura? Could you, um, check these people in for me, please? I'm, I'm not feeling too well. I feel a bit dizzy. Now, let's see. You're on your way to Australia. Oh, that's gonna be great down there. Inspired by the writings of Freud and Jung in the early 1900s, Salvador Dali and the Surrealists believed that the most fertile ground for inspiration lay locked within the subconscious. They developed a system to visit their subconscious and document what they had seen in their mind's eye. With a notebook and pencil at the ready, the artist would lie down on a daybed while holding onto a heavy silver spoon. Drifting off to sleep, the grip would weaken until finally it took the bell. The sound of the spoon as it hit the floor would wake the dreamer, who would scramble to write down all that had been seen. Uh, good evening, folks. This is Captain Robeson speaking. I hope you're having an enjoyable flight. There was something about the barf bag. I've been staring at it for hours. I've been trying to sleep, but I kept being woken by the strained smile of the stewardess with yet another thing to give me. Each time I nodded off, I was back in Berlin. And then it hit me. Why was there a small space for my name and address on a barf bag? Thanks a lot. Then I started thinking about the check-in lady back in Toronto. I kept on wondering whether or not she had thrown up. I remember when we were kids, my brother and sister and I used to love bringing ourselves to the edge of nausea with the merry-go-round. We would spin until the blood made a throbbing sound in our heads and then stagger across the playground, the whole world rushing around our ears. To keep ourselves from throwing up, we would lean our heads against a tree trunk and breathe in the musty, dark smell of the bark. Growing up in Michigan, we spent a lot of time driving to Toronto to visit our grandparents. During these long car rides, it was never a question of if we were going to get sick, but when and how often. Adam's gonna throw up. Shove him in the trunk. Are you gonna vomit? Adam, just hold on.
pill? Eventually, our parents discovered the magic of the motion sickness pill. Tiny, yellow, and very bitter tasting. This wonder drug played a clever trick on our young minds. Car travel would become so utterly fascinating that we would actually forget to throw up. The hours would drift by as we lazily rediscovered the beauty of the world around us. Get out. Hi. The only problem was trying to remember who the friendly old people were. I was late for work after spending the night with Andreas and was having a lot of difficulty walking to the tram stop. Simply ignoring the fact that the world around me was spinning crazily out of control didn't seem to help. The dizziness wasn't totally new, but this was definitely the most incapacitating episode. I'd been trying not to worry about it, knowing that it was yet another feeble attempt by my body to tell me something that I didn't want to hear. But I wasn't prepared for this kind of attack. Across the street, I spotted the bakery. Surely the smells of warm cinnamon buns and coffee would pull me back to the real world. If I could just make it across the street. I went to see the doctor because I was afraid I had some kind of terminal brain tumor. Uh-uh. That makes it only worse. You know, the your Schwindelgefühl comes nur durch den Druck der Umstände. Uh, I mean, your dizziness is just because of the outside, you know, Things that happens outside. It's the outside. I have here... She told me that my dizziness was due to stress only. And gave me a pamphlet with drawings explaining various techniques to realign myself within my body. It seemed to be an overly simple solution to things. At university, my brother Jeffrey was a star athlete and editor of the campus newspaper. One evening after dinner, while strolling with his girlfriend, she announced that she was dumping him for someone else. Jeff nodded coolly, taking the news all in stride. And then ducking behind some bushes, he threw up his dinner. From the beginning, Andreas said that it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair, falling in love with someone that you knew was going to be going away.